Howdy, I'm Mike Cermak, known on the site as Tech Guy. You can visit us at techguy.org for computer problems. Today I'm reviewing the Cloud9C989M keyboard. It's an RGB ergonomic keyboard. Comes in this unusually shaped box with kind of a two halves of the keyboard stacked on top of each other. I'm a big fan of ergonomic keyboards. I've had Microsoft and Logitech ergonomic keyboards for a long time. I, it was time to upgrade. I decided to give this guy a try. As of now, the beginning of November 2020, it's $180 on Amazon. When I ordered it, it wasn't available on Amazon Prime or Amazon Direct Shipping. I had to wait quite a while for it to come from Cloud9. Uh, but it's here, and I wanted to take you uh, on a little tour of it. So as you can see here, we've got a full-size ergonomic keyboard. One quality that jumps out to a lot of people is, of course, the RGB LEDs that don't do a whole lot for me, but they're very flashy if you're in an environment like that, or if you're a streamer or a gamer, I could see people would like that. Also, the keyboard splits apart, uh, so you can kind of set, as far as the ergonomics go, how close or how far away you want it as you're working, as well as the angle uh, between the two sides of the keyboard. There is no adjustment whatsoever for height, so if we look at the back of this, for example, there is nothing here that's going to open or adjust or give you uh, any kind of ad adjustment. So this is not going to go up in this direction, it's not going to go up in the reverse direction, it's not going to go up like a normal keyboard would. It is set for the height that it is set for on both sides. Uh, between them, where they connect, there are little magnets there. They're not particularly strong. They are uh, good enough so that when you put it together, it doesn't pull them together, but it just gives it a little bit of friction so that when you're pushing the keyboard, it largely stays together. I think they could use a little bit stronger magnets. Um, what else is on here? The keyboard itself, over on the left side, we've got 10 macro buttons. We'll talk about those shortly. Um, over here, we've got the full-size uh, number pad, which I like. There are some competing keyboards out there that don't have this, and I use the number pad enough that I thought I would want it. Now that I have it, and especially when I'm using it, if I split it in any amount, but even if I don't, my mouse feels like it's so far over to the right that I kind of have to stretch to reach it. Maybe I need to move my workstation around a little bit, or maybe I would consider not use having the number pad in the future. I know some people use this, especially if they're gamers, and put the mouse in between here. That certainly doesn't work for my style of work, but that's something you can consider as well. Uh, it does have an awful lot of flexibility as far as what the keys do. By default, of course, you've got the standard keypad here. You've got your standard buttons here for your page up, page down, home, delete. Everything's where you would think it would be. Uh, you've got the standard function keys across the top for F1, F2. Some of these keys have special functions to them. The F1, F2, F3, F4, F5 have media functions for... Uh, music, play, stop, rewind, fast forward, or I guess those would probably be track skip buttons. The button here in the center, this big dial, primarily is used for volume control, and it's also a button you can push it and that'll mute. There's other features you can assign to this dial as well, including the brightness of the LEDs or changing the LEDs that are on the side of the keyboard, on both sides of the keyboard. One thing I dislike about this is this function key here on the left side. Uh, it is where the Windows key ought to be. So whenever I'm you know, opening up programs instinctively, anytime I open any program, I rarely look at my desktop. I usually Windows R and, or just Windows and start typing in you know, Photoshop and enter or Windows and you know, Firefox enter. Uh, I, just the style of, uh, of computer geek I am, I suppose. But I use this Windows key all the time instinctively and it's not there. What is nice about this keyboard, though, is you can assign this. So I can change this function key in the software, I'll show you in a moment, and make that the Windows key. So that's kind of nice, there's that much flexibility in it. Over on the left, the macro buttons are pretty neat. One problem I have is whenever I assign custom colors on this, and we'll look at that in the software in a moment, you can't select a custom uh, color for M1, and also you can't assign a function to M1. So the M1 key is not functional on this keyboard. I don't know if I have a bad keyboard or what. When I discovered that this M1 button doesn't work on my keyboard, I went to their website and Cloud9 has a support section. Under that it says I don't have permission to go to support. So I found a regular contact form for the company, sent them a message explaining that I can you know, customize all the other keys on the keyboard, but not M1, that lighting doesn't work, and the macro function, or any function that I assign to that M1 doesn't work. So I got a response back within a couple of days with a link to the video of how to assign the buttons. 
which clearly I've already done. I, I described that pretty well in it, and I replied back saying as much. And they replied back again with no text whatsoever, just once again the URL to the same video. And I replied back and said, pretty sure you made a little mistake here. You sent me that same URL again, and I've heard nothing else back. They've, they've you know, <laughs> ghosted me. So the support is lacking for sure. Uh, I mean, I would probably expect with a $180 keyboard that you'd be able to get some better support than if you get a, a knockoff one straight from China through Amazon, you're, you're probably going to get the same level of support. So that's a little bit of a disappointment. But let's look into the software. You have to download the software in advance, and they do give you this nice sheet of paper uh, that tells you download the latest software first. As far as I can tell, the software is only available on Windows. I don't see any Mac or Linux options on it. Uh, oh, also, I wanted to mention about the keyboard connections. Uh, it's a little dark in here to see. I wanted you to be able to see the LEDs. But on the back of this side, there are several ports. Uh, you might be able to make it out a little bit. I don't have quite enough wire to get you at a great angle. But uh, we've got several ports. We have a USB-C that connects to the computer, which is actually this one here. And that comes with a USB-C to USB-A adapter, so you don't have to worry about whether or not your computer has USB-C. You get a USB-A here that you could use to plug in a mouse. And then you have what appears to be a USB-C here, but it really isn't. Uh, it's, it is a USB-C form factor, but they're not using USB standard on it. And the easy way to tell that is the instructions point out to you to make sure you have it uh, plugged in a certain direction. And if you have them backwards, then it doesn't work. Uh, so I, I'm never a big fan of people using USB-C size ports for something other than USB-C, but there you have it. Uh, the hotkeys, lots of neat little hotkeys here you can use. Like I said, the uh, dial here can be used for volume or brightness control. You can also do the backlight and dimmer by turning them. The side lighting is function in the space bar. Oh, I think I misspoke. I think I told you that was through the dial, but that's function space bar. Center dial lighting, that's how you can change the uh, center dial, what color it is. Right now you can see mine is red, but you can change that. Media controls we talked about, or turn off all of the lights. Uh, so let's jump into the software here and have a look. If you have um, a look here, the software has a, a nice enough feel to it. Uh, one, there's a couple things that make it feel not quite finished. For example, whenever I'm on this home uh, customized screen, it shows this color layout with the RGB as it is now rather than what lighting is actually going on on the keyboard. Under lighting, it shows the correct lighting, and we'll talk about that, but this background lighting here is a little bit misleading. That said, what is really nice under this customize is you can customize the function of any key on this keyboard. So I can go over here to the M keys, for example, M1, and I can say, make that be a keyboard. So I could have M1 just hit the A button if I wanted to do that for some reason, or I can have it do the mouse function, uh, left button, right button, scroll up, scroll down, or I can have it do a macro, and we'll talk about macros here in a couple of minutes. Or we can do the combo key. So you can do up to three keyboard movements built in here without having to create your own macro. Uh, so I can go in here and say hit one, hit F1, and then hit left arrow. Might as well create a macro, but that's kind of nice they have that there. Run a program. You can specify a program or URL to go to when you press that button. Multimedia gives you the buttons for volume control, play, pause, stop, next, and also email and calculator. Uh, we have Windows hotkeys, which includes task manager, bringing up your desktop, application loops, switch applications, close application, cut, copy, paste. Those I thought were kind of funny at first, but I could see using those. Instead of doing a control C, just press the you know, M3 button on my, my uh, button on the side there. I, I might use that. Of course, none of that makes any difference on my keyboard because the M1 button doesn't do anything, but you can assign those to any of these buttons, but actually any button on the keyboard. So if you really wanted to confuse someone, I can go to the K button and make it do anything other than hit the K. Uh, I don't know why you'd want to, but you have that flexibility likewise over here. Now, one thing I have done, you might have noticed, is the function key down here at the bottom left, I've reassigned that to be the Windows key. Uh, so anytime I hit that function key, it's actually going to press it as though I had hit a Windows key. I like that I can change that. Under lighting, you have rotating lighting, which is what you're seeing right now. Uh, any lighting effect that has uh, movement in it, you can adjust the speed of it. You can also adjust the brightness of it. Right now, I have it at the highest brightness. It's not super bright. It's, it's bright enough uh, for most people, but it's not going to blow you away in a bright room, certainly. 
and uh, you have static lights on. You can choose the color here, single on, which is basically just when you press a certain key, it turns that on. There's a glittering effect, all kinds of different effects. Um, you can do user defined, which I thought this was kind of nice. I went in here and color coded different buttons depending on what I want them to do. And as you can see on the camera here, uh, I have some buttons, different colors, just, uh, you know, I don't know how useful that is. I, I, you know, certainly type without looking at the keyboard that much, but kind of a neat function to have, especially uh, is uh, because you can set up different profiles on this keyboard. So you could have one profile. Let me bring that up here. You could have one profile up here for gaming and one profile up here for programming and one profile up here for word processing. And you could have different keys doing different things. And I could see a case where you would, uh, perhaps have different colors in different profiles. Now one thing I'll point out uh, here is in the user defined mode I set these to be green except for M10 I made that blue uh, but you can see M1 doesn't change color so in the user defined mode if I set a color up here to this M1 uh, let's see if we can make it red for example yeah it doesn't so I can't change the color of M1 I can change the color of some others if I go to my numeric buttons over here, for example, and make them uh, red or orange. Oh, I see, I was clicking up here. But, and you can see over here, this M1 is turning red. I'll hit apply, and on my keyboard, you can see M2, M3 turned red, but not M1. I don't know. Again, that may just be this keyboard. I, I have no way of knowing because they won't talk to me. <laughs> um, what else do I want to show you here? One uh, um, lighting scheme that I rather like in it is called ripples. And what's neat with this, if you see my keyboard here, is when I push a key, the colors kind of explode from that from that key, which I don't know how f you know it, useful. None of this is useful. It's all for show, right? But um, it could be a little distracting, but uh, it's a neat feature to have. I thought that was a nice lighting effect of any of the lighting effects, but I, I'm more of a function over form kind of guy, so I would probably choose this user-defined layout. There's a choice here for gaming mode, and in gaming mode you can turn that on to disable some of these keys that you don't want to accidentally hit while you're playing a game. And then we have the macros. So you can go in here, create a new macro, and then record whatever you want it to do. Whatever buttons you push here, it'll add here. We'll stop recording. You can fine-tune it, you can adjust the delay in it, and uh, apply it. And once you've done that, when you go to customize, you can go to any key on the keyboard, and select macro and tell it to play that macro once, multiple times, or until you tell it to stop. Likewise, you can actually assign that to any button on the keyboard. So you can drive someone really crazy by going to another key, like the A key, and assigning that macro to it, so that every time they push the A key, it hits all of those random letters. <laughs> and that's about all there is to the software. It's relatively simple. Um, there's you know language settings in here. There's not a lot else, at least just yet. And uh, but the the nice thing is, again, I like that you can customize so much on it. You can customize every button and what it does, except for the M1 button. So that is the Cloud9 C989M mechanical keyboard. Hopefully that's been useful to you. And if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments or visit us on the website, techguide.org. We have volunteers there who are willing to help with computer problems. Technical support community with people just trying to help each other. Uh, there's no charge for it. It's all paid for by advertisers and donations. So if you haven't already, go check that out. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Hopefully we'll be making some more videos like this. Let me know what you might be interested in. I'll see you.